Hello, my lovely friends, it's Margaret, and we are doing something a little bit different for Writer Wednesday. It's been a couple of years since I did my first Writer Wednesday video, and I wanted to just kind of go back and see if I still agreed with a lot of the advice that I gave on that video. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going back and reacting to my very first Writer Wednesday. It is titled, Five Tips to Help You Win NaNoWriMo Writer Wednesday Number One. I don't even remember what those five tips are. I have no recollection of them. This is why I write things down. I write them down so I don't have to remember them. All of that out of the way, I don't think there's anything else you need to know. It's a video, it's on my channel. I will have it linked up top if you want to watch it without my commentary at some point or if you find anything helpful and you want to go back to it. The look, well, we'll get into that in a minute. So on your mark, get set, go. So at first I thought it was a little weird to record my first official Writer Wednesday video wearing so... lipstick. But then I realized that this is going out October 31st, and what better day to be wearing blue lipstick than Halloween? Hello, my lovely friend. Okay, shh. I am so yellow. This is obviously a throwback to my very, very old bookshelves, my Percy Jackson shelf, back when I still had my Lee Bardugo books on that shelf as well. Uh, the story behind this makeup look is I did the books and makeup or makeup and books tag and I did a strange the dreamer slash muse of nightmares inspired look and then I never posted that video it ended up being so long and I didn't have a thumbnail and so I just deleted it without posting it at some point I'm gonna go back and like try and redo that especially now that I know a little bit more about makeup and how to apply makeup and I feel like I'm a little bit better at it but um yeah to look and also like the fact that I'm very yellow is just bothering me I know that's entirely a trick of the lighting and the fact that I did not um, know how to adjust my color stuff in we video the crap video editing program that I use run away run away very far if anyone ever suggests that program it is the bane of my existence anyways let's go back it's Margaret and it is time to nerd out about NaNoWriMo. In case the title of this video oh God. didn't clue you- This is when I still said it's time to nerd out about- Oh man. I'm fine. I was such a dork when I started my channel. I mean I still can't- like I still say wordy and nerdy at the end. So I'm probably still a huge dork but I was just such a dork. I'm done. And I am doing NaNoWriMo this year. I actually pretty much do NaNoWriMo every year. Though it doesn't help. I just realized I have not told you what I am doing for NaNoWriMo in this video this year. What my goal is. We'll do that at the end. Whatever. And I also have not told you what NaNoWriMo is. Uh, if you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, there's a helpful video up here that I made last year talking about what NaNoWriMo, in fact, is. What, what they mean by NaNoWriMo and all the different ways that you can participate in NaNoWriMo. But that is not the whoop, stop it, point of this particular video. So, let's go again always look like your typical nano. Since I've been doing this for a few years now, I thought I'd talk to y'all about some of the tips that I use to help me succeed every November at NaNoWriMo. But before we start, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. I make videos two to three times a week on a books and writing, and I would love to see your lovely face here on a regular basis. Oh yeah, back when I still asked people to like and subscribe at the beginning of the video, I probably should still do that because I, I hear it's effective and useful. But right now I'm just cringing over the sound quality. Like, I'm so spoiled by this new microphone. Not noon at this point, but like this microphone is so much better. I'm reacting, I'm supposed to be reacting to the advice. I haven't even gotten to the advice yet, I'm sorry. But before we start, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. I make videos two to three times a week on a books and writing, and I would love to see your lovely face here on a regular basis. Like I said at the beginning, this is what I hope is going to be the first in a permanent Wednesday series. Writer Wednesday being a thing and all. I've been thinking, I don't know that we'd say it's permanent, but it is a recurring series, I do manage to occasionally make Writer Wednesday videos, and I'm trying to get better about it. ...about starting this series up for a while now, and NaNoWriMo just was the perfect opportunity. You'll actually be getting quite a lot of writing content from me this November. Since it is NaNoWriMo, I will be doing these Wednesday videos, and in addition to that, I will be doing some NaNoWriMo writing vlogs. But don't worry, the bookish content will continue, and when December rolls around, you will have much more of it. Very quickly, for those of you that are scratching your head and going, what the heck is NaNoWriMo? NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month, and it runs from November 1st until November 30th. 
during the month of November. Oh. Again, I have a much more detailed video about that linked up in the d description box. I'll put it there. That oh, makes sense. A bunch of writers get together and they try to write 50,000 words in one month. The goal for this is for writers everywhere to focus on their writing for 30 days and to write 50,000 words during that time. For most genres, 50,000 words is not a full novel, but it is a good chunk. I personally have been doing NaNoWriMo since 2013, and my goals vary from year to year. Some years, like this year, my goal is a, the more traditional 50,000 words, but I have also used it in the past to focus on editing a novel that I have already written. So far, I've won twice, once in 2015 and once in 2017, uh, but I didn't submit it for verification that year because it was a fan fiction project, and I was just like, didn't care. Last year was actually one of the years that I... That's right, you heard it here first, folks. I have done fan fiction for NaNoWriMo. Have not finished that fic yet. I'm a terrible Captain Spawn fan, but I did it. I really like that fic too. I just stopped writing for the fan. I just stopped writing. <laughs> I was doing an editing focus, so I think it's about time we got into the stuff that you clicked the title of this video for. The first tip I have for you guys is to break it down. 50,000 words seems like a lot. It seems impossible. And in a single day, yeah, it probably is, unless you're Clark Kent. And even while his fingers could keep up with that pace, I'm not sure his Nerd. brain could. To break it down Nerd. into steps. I'm a number person and a huge... Why did she... Okay, um, this is not at all related to writing, but I'm pretty sure it is canonically... It is canon that Clark Kent's brain does, in fact it is able to work at the same speed that he is able to work at. So I don't know why I said that because she would have known that. 2018 Margaret would have known that because the comic that I read that in was a long time ago. I don't know why she said that. Please ignore. Huge planner. So I like breaking things down into smaller parts. What the official NaNoWriMo website tells you is that you need to be writing about 1,667 words a day to finish on time. That does still sound daunting, but it's much more doable for most people than like, you know, thinking about 50,000 words. That gets into tip number two, which is schedule. Okay, so I do in fact still agree with that. I do think that breaking things down is a really good way to do that. I am going to turn you on to uh, a app that I just learned about and it has changed my writing game in just like less than 24 hours. It is called For the Words and it's basically a way to, as they say, gamify your writing experience. You can choose, like you get to make your little avatar and there's a quest involved, but you get to choose like these little creatures to fight by typing words. Like that's the whole goal is type, you defeat them by typing the, the number of words, but they have like small time increments. They have small word counts. I think like the smallest is like a hundred words in like 20 minutes or something like that. And it's really, really helpful for just kind of having you focus on just getting something written and it makes it kind of fun because it also like you're you're trying to accomplish something other than just get words on the page so I really like that um but I do I'm a big fan of going okay I need to do this task and I need to break it down into steps that my brain can process and so I, yeah I still agree with that I have a feeling I'll probably still agree with most of this but you know what we're still gonna do this video because I have no better ideas that gets into tip number two which is schedules are your friend Okay, some of you guys just cringed when I said the word schedule, I know. But let me tell you something, if you wanna conquer something big like this, you need to have a plan. Most of us are really busy. We have jobs, we have school, we have kids to take care of. And it's really easy to get distracted by all of that stuff because it is important stuff. However, if you don't make time for your writing, it will never get written. Even if it is just for the month of November, I encourage you to like pencil in the blocks of writing time on your calendar or your bullet journal or whatever you use to do your planning. Not only does it help you get in place to do the thing, it also helps you figure out how much you can do in each day. For example, maybe you work long hours during the week so you don't have as much time to write at night. So writing the 1600 words that everyone recommends is a little bit of a stretch for you. However, you might be able to commit to a thousand words a night on the weekdays and then 3,500 over Saturday and Sunday. Or maybe your schedule means that you have three solid days to write. Who does this woman think she is writing 3,500 words on a, in one day? What is wrong? What is wrong with you? 
that, mm, it's just, this, this, this is part, like, I am in a very different place mentally, obviously, but, like, just very different place in writing than this person who filmed this video. I don't, wow. So you decide to aim for 4,000 words on each of those Anyways. pages. I am never better at planning out my writing time than when it's NaNoWriMo time. This is true. I'm a little bit of a slacker the rest of the year. My third tip so is to get away. Okay, so I agree with this one as well. I am not great about doing it, but I do agree with this one. I think that any time you can carve away to write is worth carving away. Now that can be difficult sometimes. Right now I don't have a lot of free time. I come home at 5.30, so actually no, I get off at 5.30 and then I come home at 6.00. And so I don't have a lot of time when you get down to dinner and the amount of time that my brain needs to deprogram. Yeah, just, or de-stress, I don't entirely know. So I don't have a lot of writing, but still I make, you know, making the effort is worth it, even if I have not been practicing what I preach. <laughs> my third tip is to get away. Distractions thrive when you're in a familiar environment. Right now, I have laundry that needs to be done. I have a room that needs the to be laundry. cleaned. There are dishes that need to be unloaded. At the moment, the laundry is keeping me from taking a nap. But if I did the laundry, then I could take a nap. Like, listen, that bed calls to you when you sit down to write. Let's be honest. It calls to you. So I come back. It's much easier to resist that call if you make your bed. I have learned this in the last, like, six months. If you can't get all nice and warm and snugly under the covers, it's much easier to, like, nah, I probably, I don't want to mess that up. I don't want to mess with that up. It's also much easier to be productive. Um, but look, cameo, buy my laundry, because laundry is never ending. That by trying to schedule at least some writing time away from my home. I will use my library or Panera or Starbucks. Uh, because it's in those environments, I don't have any choice but to write. Even if it's only like two or three days a week, I suggest you try and find a little bit of time to get away from your distractions and have some really focused writing time it might require some juggling or explaining but and here is where your schedule comes in usually if people know about these things ahead of time they're willing to make plans around them and adjust to your plans tip number four is really important that so don't really recommend that one this year uh yeah i still haven't figured out how we're gonna get everything done that i usually get done when i cannot just you know plop my ass down at Starbucks and say you're not going home and you're not getting dinner until you've written this many words. Because that, that hasn't been as effective in the last two years as it used to be, but it still is kind of an effective thing for me. I miss my library. I miss my library so much. So much. Anyways, let's go back to the video before I start crying. Tip number four is really important, that is to plug into the community. There is a built-in community with NaNoWriMo through the NaNoWriMo website, which I will link down though. below. There are so many writers doing NaNoWriMo, so many. And because of that, there are so many ways to plug in. Whether it is through your local NaNoWriMo challenge or through friends that you have online, take the time to connect with people who are also doing NaNoWriMo. Having that community will encourage you and help you push on to meet all of your goals. Even when you fall behind or life gets crazy or you have to reevaluate things, community is key to doing well. And with that, I come to my final tip, which is quite... Okay, so let us discuss. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit harder to do in-person write-ins this year because this year, uh, pandemic, can't really go places, six feet apart, all of that good stuff. So, wouldn't suggest looking up what, unless you're not in the United States. I mean, it's different in other countries. But I, you know, if you're U.S.-based like I am, I would not suggest going to local write-ins, especially if your country is on lockdown, as ours should have been. I'm getting political again, you know, aren't I? Oops. Um, anyways, but I will say that I have really tapped into my online writing friends. I love the people that I have met through Twitter and through BookTube and we've talked about writing and gotten involved. If you wonder why I do so many virtual writing retreats, because we've got another one coming up the third weekend of November, there will be another one because it's NaNoWriMo and we need all of the help we can get. It's because of that. It's because I know that when I have people with me and helping me keep accountable and people that I am keeping accountable, I am much more likely to sit down and do the work, which is kind of the most important part of NaNoWriMo. 
the most important part is just sitting your butt in the chair and doing the work. Find writer friends online that you can plug into, that you can interact with. Uh, if you would like, I can be your writer friend. My Twitter is down in the description box. Go down there. I do writing stuff all the time. I'm doing write-ins every virtual write-ins every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which I've already mentioned. Obviously, I'm doing these writer videos. Find people that can encourage you and also that will call you out when your ass is not doing the work. All right, let's find out what this final tip is. I'm actually really interested to see what it is. And with that, I come to my final tip, which is quite possibly the most important tip. Tip number five is make Nano work for you. 50,000 words in a month is a lot. And sometimes it's just not feasible. But just because right. you can't get right. 50,000 words down in a month, that doesn't mean you shouldn't use November to hyper-focus your right. writing habits. For me, that's the Listen. most important part of yeah. NaNoWriMo. It's my excuse to say, okay, for this one month, mm -hmm. I am putting aside mm -hmm. as much as I can, and I'm going to focus on working on my book. It's okay to Do make it. up your own goals, guys. NaNo is meant to serve you, not the other mm -hmm. way around. So if you can't do 50,000, try committing to 30,000 instead. That's half a novel, guys. A whole half a novel. Or if you're like, I've been in the past where you don't want to be drafting a new project, you have one you need to edit, use it to focus on your editing. NaNoWriMo is what you make it. And even if you don't or can't make it to 50,000 words, any progress is a win in my book. All right, those are my five Preach. tips for winning at Preach. NaNoWriMo. Preach. So question of the day, drop down in the comments. Okay, we don't need to, we don't need to listen to the, oh, yes. Yes, I agree with all of the advice I've given, even if not all of it is advice that you can do, um, especially that last bit, the fact that you need to make nano work for you. It's okay to change things up and not do things the traditional way, the, the 30, that 50,000 words in 30 days. Like, you don't have to do that. The most important part is that you are writing and you are working on that novel uh, because, as I've said before, you're doing something that other people don't do. Other people just sit with the novel in their head, and if you are working on it, you're a step ahead of them. So yeah, I I think I think 2018 Margaret knew what she was talking about and she gives good advice and I agree with the advice that she giveth. Uh, even if the only place that is safe is inside right now at home. One tip that I'm surprised that I didn't mention in that video is don't go back. If you are trying to do the fast draft 50,000 words in 30 days, you do not have the time to go back. So just like figure out a way. I know authors that they will change the font to Wingdings once they have written something or they write entirely in Wingdings. I could not do that. It would be typos everywhere and nothing would make sense when I was done. I actually have to like be able to make sure I finish sentences and stuff. But what I do is when I finish a session and I've counted those words or what I was doing, I don't think I can do this with further word. Uh, and that is how I'm doing all of my writing this year. That's how it's going to happen because it makes me happy and it brings me joy and it makes me motivated. And I need all the motivation I can get right now. But what I have done in the past is I will change the color of my font from black to like a light gray. So I can still kind of see that it's there, but I can't really read it and go back. And then I change it back to black when I paste it into the master draft. The other thing that I'm surprised she did not mention is back up your have it in as many places as possible. Just back it up, back it up, put it on a thumb drive, put it on Google Drive, put it in six different writing software programs that you're all trying out at the same time. Like, make sure it is backed up. That net, the, the video you just watched, I'm pretty sure, or the video we just watched, I'm pretty sure that's the NaNoWriMo that my computer died on me like a week out from the end when I was in the middle of an edit. Luckily, I knew my computer was kind of on its last legs, that things were not going great. So that morning, that morning, I transferred all of my stories or I updated my thumb drive that keeps all of my work. I'm not as good now that it's on Google Drive, but I updated my thumb drive that has all of my work. The computer died on me that tonight. I literally was hours, hours was the difference between me losing all of my work and still having it. Save your work, back up your work. If you're curious about what I am doing for NaNoWriMo this year, I am doing the traditional 50,000 words in 30 days. I am working on a book that is known as Rebel King or the Bellark Spite book, depending on which side of the internet or which video or what mood you catch me in. Um, it is a mashup of like, let's say it's the Queen's Rising with Bellark as the main characters. That's kind of what I'm going for. It's gonna be real. 
there's gonna be a lot of like easter eggs for the 100 tv show in this novel that will probably only make sense to me in most places we still haven't gotten to the part where he says brave princess yet but it is gonna happen guys it is happening it will happen it will happen. This is the most excited I have been about a fiction project in a very long time, partly because it's the first time I am drafting a fiction project from the very beginning in a very long time and not having to edit things. Although I think I drafted something last year. I did Ash Girl last year, if that's right, or this year. Anyways, I, uh, I'm very excited and I'm trying not to think too hard about it. I'm doing things a little differently. And I'm trying not to be, you know, too uptight about it. And yet, I still need to go make today's word count. I'm a couple of hundred words away from it because we were up all night. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want more videos from me, writing, book, anything like that, there are gonna be some over here on the screen. I would love it if you clicked those and gave me more watch time. Anyways, <laughs> small YouTuber, gotta hustle where I can and beg people to watch my videos. That is it for now, my friends. Happy writing and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!